Coming up on the Audio Visual Podcast, Allison Bostow. The people that come into your life come into your life for a reason, whether it's a positive reason or a negative reason. You never dismiss them. You always keep them in your phone. You always keep them in your back pocket. You always drop them a text that says, "Hope your day is going great." Maybe out of the blue, but you do it because those people are who you're leaving your trademark to. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Audio Visual Podcast, a podcast where you can get in depth interviews with broadcasters, marketers, streamers, gamers, small and large business owners, and more. The podcast that shows everyone has a creative side, no matter what career field or hobby you do. I have to introduce our next guest here on the Audio Visual well, Podcast. I have to. I, I do have to. If I can pronounce every name right here on this, you think you think I would. It is actually a very good friend and uh, the person that gave me the opportunity to, I guess, be where I'm at now, if you think about it. It is Allison Bastel. She's you, Allison. Allison. See, it's so much easier just to say Allison. Just say Allison. Because I've, I've known you. Oh, geez. Hold on. 2008. December of 2008. That's when I, it's ever since I've known you. So I've always called you by. And that's your on air name for all the media that you do, too, right? Correct. It's like Cher, it's, Madonna, <laughs> one name. Perfect. So that so you're on the level of share that Madonna, I've heard. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> I was given a lot of grief in my earlier time in this career about not having a last name. And um, they told me that, well, you're not going to. You're not going to really get anywhere if you don't have a last name. And I said, well, I guess I don't get anywhere then. It's just Allison Hmm. because I don't see myself as anything greater than the people I'm talking to. How are you today? I'm I guess. good. How You're, are you? I'm doing very well. First off, talked a little bit before we went uh, started recording. Was what is your title? Because you have many many titles. You wear many hats in what you've done. So my title has changed over the course of the last 35 years, uh, and and it's just a different phase of where my career has been. Uh, in my 20s and in my 30s, I really was, you know, go getter. Wanted to climb that ladder, so the titles got bigger uh, with more responsibility. Then I became a mom and I really wanted to focus on my daughter. So then I kind of stepped back and said, hey, I'm willing to stay in media, but I need to step back a little bit with my responsibility. And of course, with that, the Mm -hmm. titles uh, were pulled back. And and that that was at my request. Uh, Today, operations, programmer, influencer, on-air, engineering, what do you need? Engineering. That's what do you a, need? I've never heard the engineer aspect, oh, I guess. Oh, what do you need? What do you need? Well, I, I guess what we need is a interview and what we're going to do here before we break down kind of where you started to where you are today to maybe the future of your career and maybe the future of the media that you've been in. What, what's, what's it look like? Because I'm assuming it's changed in the last few years. I would say in the last decade for sure. I was so lucky to get into this industry at a time where mm-hmm. we had records. And, and you may hear this in different interviews, but I truly was so lucky to get into a time where we didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. Granted, social media today is a huge uptick to media. It really makes us pulsate on what's going on right now. But back in the day, you didn't have that. So you didn't have that. You you had to wait for it. Mm -hmm. You didn't instantly have it. You had to listen to the person on the radio to wait to what they were going to say. You didn't know at the time what was going to be said because you didn't have your phone going, oh, I know what she's going to say because it's right here. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what the big story is because I already read it 10 minutes ago. Hmm. And that's the thing. It's a very instant culture, instant culture now, I would say. Everything has to be right now. You have to find out right now. And it's that's just recently in the last 20 years, probably, that has really become instant, in my opinion. What's interesting is with that right now culture, uh, that's that's where we've stepped into. But media, the radio, the TV side of it, our rules Mm -hmm. haven't been updated the last 10, 15 years. So while you may want that information right now, we've got to make sure the information we're giving out and providing to the audience, the listener, 
is accurate. Mm-hmm. We can't just go off of what we see on social media. No. You know, it has to be fact checked. And it kills me when I see social media posts and the page that I'm on happens to say media on it. What gives you the right to have that media title? You're not under the same rules that we are governed Mm -hmm. in the industry for FCC guidelines. And almost anybody could be uh, a source now, which, once again, I think the fact checking is the biggest thing to be an actual reputable source is the main thing on that. So uh, we're going to dive into this a lot more here throughout the next uh, few moments. And Allison, what I do for each guest, kind of the thing that I love to do is do some rapid fire questions before we dive deep into the interview. I always give you guys, you know, three to five seconds to answer the rapid fire questions, just to learn a little bit more about you. Some of them may stump you, some of them may not, but it's just the same 10 questions that I ask every person that I interview. So are you ready to do some rapid fire questions? Are you? I'm always ready. All right. Are you going to ask me to? I guess we'll wait and see, huh? (laughs) All right. So let's get going. We're going to start with the first one for rapid fire questions. What's your favorite color? Purple. What's yours? Mine's red. Perfect. What's your favorite food? My favorite food, I would have to say, is barbecue, uh, barbecue wings. Okay. So my favorite food is, and it goes back to the old church thing, I love macaroni hot dish. Ooh, that's That's a good one. I like that one. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Notebook. Notebook. That's a classic with Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My favorite movie or TV show currently? Man, so I haven't watched Yellowstone yet. That's the one that... Neither have I. Yeah, that's the one I have to watch eventually. Breaking Bad, I would have to say. Okay. Yeah, that that one's just awesome. What is your go-to karaoke song, or what's your favorite song overall? I would say Pink. Anything Pink, uh, Who Knew Okay, is probably my my song that I crank up and you've had a day and you just want to sing and that's it. Okay. Uh, do you want mine? Sure. No, you don't. No, yes, it is. Uh, Three Doors Down, Kryptonite. Wow. 2000, 2000 probably, I think. So I was probably. I like, can see you yeah. getting. I can see you hitting those those low parts. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I don't know if I can sing it, but it's my favorite song. What's your favorite game? Favorite game. It would have to be a series right now, and I'm. I ever since college, Assassin's Creed series. Okay. So it's they have like how many games out? So that would be my favorite video game style. Board game. Man, I don't know. Maybe the game of life. <laughs> So I have a hard time with this question just because I'm not huge into game, games because I'm such okay. a serious person. Like, I try to analyze everything and make sure everything is uh, figured out. So okay. I have a hard time playing games because I was like, what else? I got something else to do. You got, so no, you have no favorite game? <laughs> not really, you know. Okay. I play Monopoly once there in a while. Go. I play, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll say Monopoly. What is a good spy code name for you? This one stumps everybody that I've had so far. <laughs> but you're only my second. Year. So here's the thing. I personally have plates on my vehicle and I still think I can spy around. Okay. So I, I'm just going to go with Allison. Allison? Mm-hmm. It's a spy code name. Absolutely. I love that. What is your go-to lazy dinner? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Chinese. Chinese? Okay. Would, you, would your 12-year-old self think you were cool? 12-year-old self. Absolutely, because remember to come back and ask me at the age of 12 how I tie into the industry I'm in now. Really? Yeah. Well, that, that that's pretty good that I have that question in mm-hmm. there. Would you rather sleep in late or take a long nap in the I'd day? I'd sleep in late. Okay. I'd rather take a nap midday. But that, I How think many that, naps do you take during the day? Well, it, I don't know. <laughs> Don't. Too many to not even know? I, I can't usually now. Usually wow. on the weekend, it's only like one, if possible, for the entire weekend. So you don't nap when the kids nap, or the kids don't nap anymore? Do the kids ever sleep? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, I don't think my kids ever sleep. So. Okay. And then who is your hero, the wrap it up? So I have numerous heroes. Okay. Um, I, look at, I look at every single person who has ever been on my team or who has worked with me and for me, who has grown into their career choice and has continued to develop, they're my hero because they keep going. 
Very nice. Yeah, and I would say it's very the career choices whoever you've had in the studio or still currently have in the studio, I would say it's really evolved them and they have to evolve too with it. So, right, whether yep. they've stayed in media or not. Yes. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty exciting for me to be able to watch everybody including yourself. Thank you. grow into the person you're supposed to be. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I would never thought, you know, starting a podcast, you know, it's always that thing that I've had an itch for, and I'm like, well, let's let's try it. Let's see what happens. See and if I, I gave yes. you the disclaimer. I said, are you sure you want to interview me? Because I take over the interviews. <laughs> and I said, yes, that's what I want is somebody to take over the interviews. So that's the quick rapid fire question. Thank you very much for doing that. It's just some something fun to do, I would say. They really get to know you. I, I'm going to have to remember that 12-year-old self now because... I have a feeling that's going to come up here quick. But first off, Allison, you've been, how long have you been doing, working in media? 35 plus years. 35 plus years. So you you started in high school or before then? Okay. And was it right here locally in Minot? It was in Minot. Okay. It was local. So it can, was not planned. It was not planned. So I guess, can you take us back the start from the beginning, just how, how it started? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I was... Uh, in high, high school in Max, mm-hmm. home of the Cossacks. Yes, yeah. And uh, we were doing a school play, and we needed sound effects. And back in the day, you couldn't just go to the internet to get sound effects. Uh, we So I reached out to a radio station, mm-hmm. which I happened to know the program director there because the program director's husband was our our teacher down at Max, and he's like, hey, reach out to Sal. Reach out to my wife and see what she can do for you. So I called her, and she's like, yeah, I can put those on cassette for you. Cassette. You, you can stop by <laughs> and pick them up. So drove to Minot and you know, said, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And we mm-hmm. visited, and she's like, you need to be on the radio. And I laughed at her. <laughs> uh, and I was not even 16. Really? No. Wow. And I laughed at her and I left. And I thought about it and I was like, that's crazy. Like, what? (laughs) What? But it stuck in the back of my head. And she actually, I actually had seen her probably a couple months later. And she's like, do you think about the radio thing? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I have been thinking about it. Mm. Take me, take me through the process. What do I have to do? And she's like, well, you got to pass a test. Oh, uh, and that's back when we had to take FCC tests. Okay, she goes, but unfortunately, you're not old enough yet. You have to be at least sixteen. And it was October, and she says, but you can come intern for me for. And that was back when interns were allowed. Mm-hmm. Now media to get an internship is very difficult. Yes, because of all the rules and regulations. And so I interned with her until I turned sixteen, took my test, and she hired me on the spot. Wow, that. It's just amazing how it's just like you came in here just to get some sound effects, Mm -hmm. and then it just pretty much a snap of the finger, and there you go. You were ready to roll. So what was the first station you were on? Uh, First station was KBQ 100, KBQQ. Okay. Which on the Minot frequency is 99.9, which now is one of my stations, Mix 99.9. Has the music genre changed a little bit? Of course. Of course. Yeah. And that's a one thing we can always dive into, but I, I think it's just... How radio stations have always changed their, what do you want to call it, their imaging and stuff like that. You have to shift with the decade. Yes. Uh, What is considered classic rock today is now considered oldies. What's considered main rock, it's funny because you wouldn't think of Def Leppard as classic rock. It is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, you you wouldn't think of the Beatles as oldies, but they are. And I'm just going to say, when I hear on the country station, hey, let's do a throwback, I'm like, I grew up with that song. So now I'm starting to feel that age that it's just like, oh, no. (laughs) Everything's coming here where it's going to be oldies pretty soon on classic country and stuff (laughs) like that. So you you got your job here. You did the internship. and Went to college. Went to college. Where'd you go? Went to Monet State. Okay. And then uh, jumped it off to UND. Okay. Came, was offered a job to come back and mm-hmm. at the time poor college kid you're just like yeah i'll take it back i'll come back to mine up my family's there and came mm-hmm. back and just have never left wow so did you get a spe- specific degree in broadcasting or did nope, you go no degree in broadcasting nope. uh management and communication really should have gotten a major in psychology for this position in but psychology why is that uh, there's a lot of creative personalities that you deal with a lot of 
a lot of different personalities. Let's just put it that way. We'll put it that way. You know, radio always has different personalities that fit the station. You and that's what it's a, it's yep. very important. Mm-hmm. And it's very important that those creative minds and those personalities can be heard. Mm-hmm. They have a place to express themselves. But then you also have to make sure that you can check yourself as well. Did you ever consider television or anything? Nope. Has it always been radio? No, it's always been radio. Uh, just okay. just because I've learned in the course of these years, if if you get into TV, you're you're basically you're this or you're this. You're an anchor or you're mm-hmm. this. In radio, there's so many different op- opportunities to grow within it, and that's not just radio, but it's all media now. From commercial production to being on the air to doing talent appearances to being an influencer to have a social media presence, it's really limited. I think on the TV side when you look at it. And it, and the TV side has even changed immensely too, just right. like the radio side. Right. So uh, we you, you we could dive in all day to talk about how it's changed. But so you were cassette tapes, spinning records, right? CDs, CDs, eight tracks. Honestly, when I started, we were just on the CD with everything sure. MP3 and all that. So I cannot even say I have never what is it split the film, split the tape, or whatever it is. Splice, splice. See, I knew what it was, but I never <laughs> did it. So it was different, probably how you sold the radio station to clients or future business partners, how you really promoted stuff too and all that. Was everything more like hands-on with everybody? Absolutely. Yes. You would would actually take a radio station, the board and everything out to a talent appearance. You know, now we take a laptop and a couple mics and a mixer and we call it good. And even then, Mm -hmm. we're transitioning away from that uh, to where we're taking our smart devices with a microphone phone mm-hmm. and we're that's all we're using you know the whole thing is everyone's like how could you how could you not ever leave North Dakota how mm-hmm. could you not leave my not well my family's here yes you know and then my friends were here and it was a great work balance life and okay. I think that's so important to people and I was given an opportunity to climb and to grow within this company and still am yeah uh, into the media industry because now you can network out anywhere you want in the world and stay in mine at North Dakota. You've been doing this for 30 some years and I know mine at stations are maybe a little bit different than the big boys Absolutely. in like Minneapolis, Absolutely. Los Angeles and all that because it's all about market and all that. What do you think, not just here in Mina, but generally, what changes have been hard for radio, would you say? The right now aspect. Okay. The, the aspect that the audience the public they want everything right now and we're we're really quick as a as a public to get behind our smart devices and call people out on stuff mm-hmm. and to be mean and and not to have grace and not to be humble it's it's interesting because i've always told i tell this to my 20 year old daughter all the time i always say if you can't say it to someone's face mm-hmm. you don't say it on social media if you can't say it to your grandma and grandpa You don't say it on social media Mm -hmm. because there's no reason to be rude. There's no reason to be snarky. Um, I think I think people's smart devices bring out the worst in them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's the huge change is we live in a very critical world right now. There's got to be some something, though, in the radio history that has been beneficial. What is there anything in points that you see that has been beneficial for the radio side? As far as social media goes. Or not just social media, just in general, too. Would social media be a benefit to really promote a station in a different way? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, any of the radio stations right now that I am connected to can be heard anywhere you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's one of the huge benefits of, of being able to offer a media source like that. So, huge benefit. Technology's been a a great benefit. It's made us more aware of what we're doing. It's made us sound cleaner. It's made us sound better. Even the music, you know, people, people say, wow, you know, the music sounds just better. And if you, if you put a cassette in Mm -hmm. and you turn on the radio and listen to the same song, it sounds better. Mm -hmm. So the quality is there. I just think that whole mentality of we want it right now. And why aren't you delivering it right now? Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. And going back on streaming, because I remember 
uh, when I was working part time for you before, I think it was during college or just about to get out of college. Sure. Streaming was just starting to become here, I think, right. for that. So it was just starting to become something. And eventually it's now where you said it's like an app. Everything is on one app for thousands of radio stations. What do you think is the next big thing? Because if we had all of a sudden we had records to cassettes, cassettes to CDs, CDs to digital, all of a sudden digital to where you can stream everything on one device, what's going to be next? I mean, is is there something that's... You're already seeing it. You're already seeing it in if you have a smart TV or you've got a smart vehicle. You're already seeing where that technology is now taking another step forward as far as media goes because now... Now, I don't actually need a radio Mm -hmm. in my car. I've got apps. I can pull up the radio station I want on my apps. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I can, I can actually, and some of the newer, newer vehicles they're doing test drive or test, uh, test markets on where you can actually watch, I don't recommend this while you're driving, but you can watch the music videos Mm -hmm. because they're trying to bring the music video aspect back to it. Uh, You can watch the music video on your screen as the song is playing, Mm -hmm. or you can see your favorite personality in studio while they're talking. And this is in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to grow. It's not stopping. So music side, bands always got invited into the studios, play live music. Nothing wrong. They still do that today. But music itself, it's a little harder. It, it's a little bit harder, and then at the same time, it's not physical copy anymore for CDs, where everything is placed on streaming platforms. And wh- how does that all factor in? So, I guess? Yeah. so you know, and I get I get this question a lot, mm-hmm. uh, where so I can't just pop in and you know play my song on the radio. And unfortunately, those aren't rules we've made mm-hmm. as as the industry. Those rules come down from. The big guys in the music industry, not the radio stations, not the media, not the streaming. They've set the rules in place where, you know, if you're going to play this artist, you got to have approval. They got to have this sign behind them or you've got to pay this fee. So I, I think media outlets get a really it's a really hard pushback from the industry saying, well, I can't get my song on the radio. Well, it's not our fault. Mm-hmm. It's it, and then they don't realize it. It's going to be interesting because right now YouTube is a huge, mm-hmm. huge, huge platform that is not organized per se. There's no control really over it. There is, but there isn't. Mm-hmm. Everything's kind of a free for all on YouTube. And I would, if if I had to look really into the future, I would say that's going to change. And then, because there's a lot of entities losing money because of YouTube. Because of YouTube, a game changer. Then it, it could be. It could be, but it, we won't know probably for another. Well, Five would years. you say sooner, sooner or later? Then? Three years. You think that soon? Well, I look at I look at some of these TV streaming services now. Have mm. you have you seen what they're putting out there? Where no shared passwords. Uh, we're going to mm. fine you if you share your passwords. We're going we're going to limit how many devices you have to register your device before we give you access to our streaming services. I think you're going to see that more. Okay. That's going to be a precedent. And TV streaming could be a whole different discussion. What what would you say with paid radio? Because every Everybody seems to be like satellite radio had, you know, two different satellites. They try it. Yeah, they try it. You try it. You try it. Because it's new. Okay. And exciting. Yep. But where do you always come back to? To the free stuff. Right. (laughs) Because free is way better than paying. So we've been talking a little bit here, going back and forth between your career and also with radio industry where it's at now and then where it could be possibly in the future. Once again, we're speaking to Allison, who is a little bit of everything I would have to say in the media industry. So I've got a question for you, Kyle. Oh, Why yes. did you get out of media? Why did I get out of media? I mean, that might be a great a great leverage platform for this discussion. You're asking, you're asking me that question, uh-huh. how media has changed, how media is going different directions. You as someone who was in media, mm-hmm. love media. I know you do. You, I, mean, if, I came back. <laughs> right, you came back. You're doing a podcast now. Yes, yeah. Because uh, once you're in it, it's hard to leave it. Mm-hmm. And you never honestly really leave it. No. So tell me, why? I think you put it right there that you honestly never leave it. I think the whole goal of this podcast is that there's always – a media side or creative side that you can always use. And it seems like every job now involves some type of 
a media or career choice or hobby, anything like that. And it's it has evolved so much that what's really interests me is now, you know, people get paid to talk on the radio to a microphone. And that's, you know, awesome. You get to play your music, you know, you get to talk to awesome people like you, Allison, <laughs> and many uh, and many others. But at the same time, now people get paid to stream video games. I mean, that's how much it's changed. If you think about it, who would have thought people watch people playing video games would be something that's changed overall? Who would have thought you can go to college and get a degree in playing video games? Yeah, that's I think that's the aspect is like I'm still using what I've learned, not just podcast wise, you know, for hobby wise, but I would say professional wise, because I think in the aspect media has helped me make connections that are very important. It helped me communicate better with these connections in order to get what we're trying to do for our current career and everything like that. So I would say I haven't got out of media totally. It's still there. But I think the aspect is, is that it's evolving so fast right now. Like, can you keep up with everything that's evolving? Because what's what's in 10 years, what's it going to look like? Not just radio, but all the media. So I think that's the aspect is like, because podcasting, just throwing that out there for hobby wise, it's changed overall relatively quite a bit because it used to be just a, what, an iMac thing, iPod, whatever thing. And now podcasting has become just for multiple platforms and it's still, you know, relatively just audio based, but now you can hook up videos with it too and all that. So podcasting could be changed in in too. I had a really hard time getting into podcasts, like listening to podcasts. Uh, And people would be like, hey, I'm listening to so-and-so on this podcast. I'm like, what? And maybe maybe it was because I've worked in radio for so many years that I was like, man, when I get home, I just want silence, Mm -hmm. you know? And I would have friends who would be like, hey, have you heard this podcast? Or I'm watching this podcast. Or my neighbor, I love her. She's like, hey, I started a podcast. Would you mind listening and (laughs) telling me what you think? And I'm thinking, okay. You know, so I was listening and I'm thinking people have things to say, Mm -hmm. but they don't know how to always say them. They don't have a platform to say them on. They feel that nobody is listening to them. So by doing a podcast, by creating a podcast, people know that, so I'm putting it out there. Mm -hmm. And my listeners really want to hear it because if they they don't, they're going to skip over it. Mm -hmm. But if they do, they're going to keep coming back. When I was thinking of this podcast idea, And it's called audio visual for a reason, because we're going to get to a little bit more of the creative side. I really want to interview uh, marketers and broadcasters and streamers and everything like that, because media is generally that or any career wise. But when I was getting into this, I don't want it to become huge. That's not my goal. My goal is just hobby wise to interview some awesome people and hear their side of the story. With the listeners, you know, we if we get listeners, that's great. If we don't, I mean... I think it's something that I... I'll listen. Thank you. I think it'll hone my skills in a different way, though. And I could say, hey, I've done that before. And if I get three episodes, I get three episodes. If I get 20, I get 20. So What will be amazing for you is to listen to your first couple episodes, Mm -hmm. and then you listen to your 80th episode. And You're thinking 80 for me, huh? I love it. I have put the the bar up there for you, Kyle. 80, guys. You hear that. (laughs) And it'll be interesting for you professionally Mm -hmm. to hear how you have developed Mm -hmm. and changed into your podcasts. That's the most rewarding thing for me. Like That's what I'm going to be listening for. I'm going to be waiting for that 80 podcast so I can go back to your first and second one yes. and compare them and critique them <laughs> and then send you an well email that says email. have you listened to this I mean you've really you've really come a long way and I think one of my aspects that I'm very excited the the learn and grow is the interviewing because I think interviewing if you interview correctly you can tell a story way better in a sense, or listen to a story. I think that's my aspect that I really want to improve on. Always remember to connect with who you're interviewing. Mm -hmm. I always open up my interviews with how's life. How's life. As your phone goes off, somebody's asking you how's life. Well, no, I mean, (laughs) even when I walked in the studio, you had been, you, you set up and I came in, I'm like, how's the house? How's the house? And you're like, oh, it's boarded up. Can't get into it right now, but it's good. (laughs) That makes it sound like (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like there's a storm coming or something. Crack house next door. No, no, no. <laughs> We're building a house, everybody. Building a house. Yeah, and I'm so excited. I mean, I'm so excited for this journey for you and for your wife and your family because this is another step of growth for you. Mm-hmm. And I know it's something that you've wanted mm-hmm. and you've been like, agonizing over and now it's finally happening happening and i'm so excited for you so radio changing quite a bit we we've looked at uh future of radio in 10 years um 20 years is probably gonna change here in no time too but overall what has been the highlight or even one or two highlights or the best moment of your career would you say highlight of my career is seeing everybody i have worked with go on or maintain their level of success my greatest legacy and you know it's no surprise i am aging out in this career i mean to say oh i'll be in this career in 40 years i won't be Mm -hmm. and people often say when are you gonna retire you know when when i i don't know i'll know when the time is right or or when the media industry decides it's right Uh, but my biggest success stories my legacy is knowing that People have worked with me and for me that have gone on to be successful people and good people and making sure that they understand the network support that they started or had underneath them will always be there. And that's one thing I always tell people. I tell my daughter this all the time. The people that come into your life come into your life for a reason, whether it's a positive reason or a negative reason. You never dismiss them. You always keep them in your phone. You always keep them in your back pocket. You always drop them a text that says, hope your day is going great. Maybe out of the blue, but you do it. Because those people are who you're leaving your trademark to. I look at, and I'm going to drop names, Jordan Hassler. Mm -hmm. You know, he created this huge network. And... I smile every time I talk to him. We don't talk a lot, but we talk. How are the kids? How's life? Mm -hmm. I talk to you, Kyle, what's going on? I talk to Jared. I talk to Corey. I talk to Katie. I talk to Jess. talk to Scott. It's just keeping that network open. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in North Dakota. It's it's, my network is nationwide. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to understand that being an introvert is okay But to grow, you got to put yourself out there Mm -hmm. and you have to be okay to fail and pick yourself back up and put yourself back out there because someone needs you. Someone can learn from you. I've been dealt a lot of different hands in my career where people have expected a reaction and I refuse to give them a reaction Mm -hmm. because my reaction really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's the bigger picture that matters. And how you play into that picture is what counts. Who was the most, I guess, interesting interviewee that you interviewed? Is there anybody specific that you've interviewed multiple times or one time or just somebody that stood out? My daughter. Your daughter. Why is that? I interviewed I interviewed her as a senior in high school. And it was interesting because my daughter came to work with me a lot. She grew up around radio and... Uh, she she always saw radio mom, and she always got mom at home. The first question I asked her in the interview was, so if someone were to ask you about Allison and ask you about mom, what would you say? And she said, they're two totally different people. Mm-hmm. And I looked at her, I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, mom, you can be like me, mom, and you walk in a studio and you're nice Allison. And I said, <laughs> it sounds like you're... Like you, you want to put me on some kind of, you know, double personality issue. And she goes, no, she goes, you just, you turn it off and you turn it on. And she goes, you just have learned how to do that. And so listening to her perception of what she sees as my daughter, what she sees and what she sees as Allison in radio, it was interesting because I never, I always thought it was one and she always thought it as two. Biggest, biggest thing people in any type of position, media, whatever it may be, when you have children, I was always just Cassidy's mom. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd go to school and they'd be like, oh, Allison on the radio. I'm like, nope, today I'm just Cassidy's mom. You know, but that's how it has to be. And 
I never have ever used my position to leverage anything because I don't think it's a huge position to ha- use for leverage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just she was she was the most challenging interview and the most interesting interview. And I, I, I just looked at her afterwards and I said, is that really how you feel? And I, she's like, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me? She's like, you never asked. And I said, I know I've asked. She goes, you may have asked, but then you didn't listen. And I said, okay, I'll give it to you. I'm not going to, you know, discourage what you're thinking or tell you you're wrong. So yeah, that was the hardest and most the eye-opening interview that I I left thinking, wow. My mom was another good one. <laughs> the first time she was in the studio, she's like, "Do you really know what all these buttons are for?" <laughs> 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 yes. Okay, mom. Yes, ma. <laughs> I, I just do. looked at her and said, "No." Mm-mm. So please don't touch them. Like, what do you think I do? Like, what do you think? You think I just been coming to come into a building for the last thirty years and it's just chilling, just chilling, just chilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of questions here to wrap up the interview, though, and uh, this one I really want to hit on because in radio or any media, you have a chance to be very creative. And being creative with audio, you think it's all said and done, but it isn't because I don't think it ever will be because it look how it's evolved from radio, the podcasting to even to sound production in movies and stuff like that. And not just focusing on the sound. What what do you what do you think creative wise for radio? What's the future? What is it now? What's the future and everything? Do you think about that? I always say 30 seconds of audio takes at least an hour to put together. Mm-hmm. People don't realize that. When you hear a 30-second commercial on the radio, it didn't take 35 seconds to put together. Mm-hmm. It took at least an hour. A 60-second commercial takes a lot longer. Mm-hmm. You'll learn in editing your podcast. Uh, today's podcast is going to take you a while to edit it. So I think we went from... Uh, commercial production that was very overprocessed, a lot of fun sound effects, a lot of, you know, a lot of zingers in it, a lot of hear me, you know, something that sticks out, makes people go, what was that? I think we're circling back around to more reality type of production where it's very, hey, it's Allison, let me tell you about this. Mm-hmm. So very personable. Correct. One-on-one you Correct. would want in that in your car stereo sure. or anything. And I, I would agree that the production-wise for 30-second ads, a minute ads, it doesn't take 35 seconds because mm-hmm. you know how many times I have to recut the same sentences over and over and right. over to get it just right? And I, I think that's the aspect a lot of people don't see behind the scenes. And I think that's one of the coolest things in radio production or production of anything is just the background stuff, the post-production stuff. And then, of course, when you throw in – people that want to be on their own ads that have no radio experience or any, I guess, recording experience, that throws in another factor too, because it's amazing what you could do by editing it to make it sound awesome for somebody that just comes in the studio and dry dry runs it. I have a couple clients who, and I'm not being egotistical at all, but I've, I've edited their production for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And it's to the point where they're like, if she doesn't edit, I'm not doing it. I just know the demeanor they want to take. I know the direction that they need to go just from having that relationship with them. And that's great to hear because that's one of the things we talked about earlier is having the relationships, yeah. communications with your your partnerships, your sponsors, anything like that. Your listeners. Your listeners, too. Yes, yes. And it's always fun getting listeners on the radio, too, you know, and they are like, hey, it's I talked to the radio guy or the radio girl. And, and they're like, or when they call in the win prizes and stuff like that. And That was 12-year-old Allison right 12, there. 12, okay, we're circling back now. <laughs> He says, okay, let's explain this 12-year-old Allison. So, you guys have been waiting for so a while. So what's crazy is, uh, me and my girlfriends, I mean, you live in a small town. What do you do? You listen to the radio. You mm-hmm. call and make requests and dedications. And you share your crushes on the air and all the good <laughs> stuff. And mine had had a radio station that did every single night. They did a request and dedication. And it was it, it had become like a every two hours we would call in. And, of course, it was long distance. You know, so we're like, oh, we got to be quick because this is a long distance fee on our phone bills. <laughs> Mom and dad are going to get mad. And mm-hmm. 
pretty soon the announcers at night who were taking the requests and dedications just knew it was us calling. They just knew. Mm-hmm. No caller ID. They just knew as soon as they picked up the phone. We're like, hey, I'm like, oh, Allison from, you know, yeah. Douglas, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, how you doing? And so that's crazy because I was that listener that now I don't want to say annoys me now, but I was. Mm-hmm. Don't call me every hour. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yes. Don't, don't, yes, stop calling, please. Please, we know where you are. We know who you are. (laughs) Right. So, listeners are my favorite calls. Even my favorite emails, my favorite calls are the listeners that are not happy about something. I'd rather take those calls over the happy calls. And the reason is because if someone is not happy with a service, and this doesn't just go for media, but it's it's everything. Yes. And they've taken the time to pick up the phone and call or stop by your place of business. You need to take the time to listen to them and understand where they're coming from and try to help resolve it or explain the situation to help them understand why something was said the way it was said or was done the way it was done and never to dismiss anybody's opinion. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got their own persona on things and everybody has the right to have that looked at, to Mm -hmm. to the respect to be listened to. Now, I have a challenge for you. I would like you to interview Landon. My boy, by the way, mm-hmm. yes, your yep. son, yep. who is four, uh, no. five, <laughs> no, six, yes. seven, no, nope, six, six. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been through it all, <laughs> all the years I've been there. I'm climbing. Yes. So I would like you to interview him okay. now, okay. and I would like you to interview him as a senior in high school, asking the same scenario questions. Hmm. And I want you to make sure the questions that you ask him now are above his spectrum. They're hard questions. He's not going to understand them. Okay. And maybe have a list of 40 questions. He's not going to know what the words mean. He's And you just tell him, take your best guess. What mm-hmm. do you think? You I know? like it. And when he's a senior in high school, has to answer the same questions. I love it. 40 questions. I like that. We'll see what he says. And kindergarten, the senior year, that's going to go fast. It is. So too enjoy fast. it. Yes. Don't work too hard. No. No, no, no. Don't work too hard. You got to really breathe and let it all in. You got to find that work balance. It's something I did not realize until my daughter became junior in high school. Mm -hmm. So I missed a lot. I didn't miss a lot. I just stretched myself really thin uh, trying to to prove that, yep, I'm a good mom and I'm a good manager and I'm good at this and I'm good at that. And it was, there was a few years I was tired. (laughs) Just a few. Just a few, guys. Is there anything else you would like to add or is there any questions uh, that you have or anything? Just uh, wrap it up, put a bow on it for all the listeners out there. No, you know, just keep being the best that you can be. You're going to fail. We all fail. It's okay. Don't take it personal. Be as professional as you can. Be humble. Be kind. Treat those how you would want to be treated. And I know it sounds like an old cliche, but it's true. And don't burn bridges. I don't want to say the town is too small. The state is too small. We live in such an industry and a world right now. We are so connected all over the place through social media. You don't want to burn that bridge in Wisconsin, New York, Maine. Just keep your network strong. And I always think of it this way. Is it better to reach out to someone you haven't talked to in two years and they think, oh, well, Kyle only reaches out when he needs something? Or... Just knowing that that support, Hmm. it's a network support. It's not a need. It's support that you have your cheerleaders always supporting you. When you're doing something great, you want that network to go, I see you're doing something great. Keep going. Or what happened there? How can we help you to fix it? Kyle, you're building a house. I'm so excited for you. You know, Kyle, you're getting married. I'm so excited for you. I'm already married. <laughs> just, just letting you know. I'm backing up the stages of his life that yes. I've been a part of. Yes. But you know what I mean? Like, it's the network of support. It's not the network of need. It's support. And once again, great advice from Allison, who's been in media, social media influencer for 
30 odd years and still going strong. And Alice and I just have to say thank you very much for coming on the podcast to really just discuss radio overall, discuss career wise for, you know, what you've done and what any listeners are listening to give them advice and give them motivation to just try something. And if they fail, that's okay. Once again, that is Allison. Thank you very much for joining me on the audio visual podcast. You can check us out on all your major podcasting streaming platforms. And once again, this is Kyle Dean. Thank you for tuning in.